Let's go over all the armor sets in Ghost of Tsushima, including the one you can get from the Digital Deluxe Edition. I want to go over their perks, how you can get them, and show some combat as well. So a like on the video would be super appreciated, and let's go. You of course start the game in the broken armor that has no perks whatsoever and cannot be upgraded, and I really like how completely worn out it looks. So luckily we get something new relatively early in the game. If you have the Deluxe Edition or the Collector's Edition, then you get access to the Hero of Tsushima armor upon entering the open world, like then it should be in your menu. And I really like the look of this with the fur on the back and the color combination is great. And it doesn't have a mask, so I use it with the Thief's Wrap that you can get very early in the game from a gift altar. And then it looks way better in my opinion. You get a major health increase and the damage is reduced by a moderate amount. And that's pretty nice for an early game armor and also one without any upgrades. It also fits pretty well with the horse from the deluxe edition that you can also pick at the start of the game. I do think though that as soon as you get the samurai clan armor and upgrade that. Then it will be nice to wear this one instead. It namely also reduces your damage but by a major amount. And you can also get the health to a major amount if you upgrade the armor and then on top of that you get resolve from taking damage and that is nice so you can heal yourself more often. I also love how you can already look like a badass early on in the game if you just upgrade this armor two times. Something you can easily do and I have farm tips up on the channel to get supplies and other resources and I will link to all my Ghost of Tsushima videos in the pinned comments so you can easily watch them. You get the Samurai Clan armor from the Masako main mission, actually the third open world main mission in the game. And you can already get another outfit before that, but it kind of depends on when you visit your first merchant. Because by talking to the shopkeeper, you get the traveler's attire. And you can find one of them in the first camp that appears on your map or just any other merchant in the game you come across will give you the armor the first time you speak to them. And as noted in my early tips videos, this armor is super handy to upgrade as soon as possible to get to that 30% extra fog clear when exploring the open world. It also helps you track artifacts or has the controller vibrate when within the artifact distance so you can then easily track them. I mostly use this armor though when exploring parts of the map that I haven't been to before because then you unlock way more locations than with any other suit. You can already get the Tadayori armor pretty early too. Like I completed that mythic tale before I even got the assassinate so that was quite a challenge. And this armor is all about the bow, all about being an archer and I really love the hat that you get when upgrading it. It focuses on increasing the knocking and reload speed of your bow. It increases the time that you can use the concentration ability so you have more time to land those headshots. And when you do, you will actually see the concentration meter fill again. And that's thanks to the third perk on this armor. And I really grew to love my bow after like upgrading it. So then you deal way more damage and can one shot particular enemies. And this outfit is really key for if you want to focus on that playstyle. So you get it from the Legend of Tadayori Mythic Mission that you find over here on the map in the first area. And in that same area you find the Blood on the Grass main mission that will give you the Ronin outfit at the end. And this is a straw hat inspired suit that doesn't change the look of the particular armor. But it does give you a new headgear the further you upgrade until you get the cool straw hat signature hat. It's a pretty cool early game stealth armor reducing your enemy detection and also after leaving the grass enemies will take longer to detect you. Also cool is that it increases your melee damage 30% after some upgrades. So you would think that the higher your katana the more the bonus will be then right? The wording is interesting because we also have the Sakai clan armor that says major increase to melee damage instead of the 30%. So it will be cool to try this out more so we can really see the differences. Although if you already noticed anything let me know in the comments down below. And I really like the Sakai clan armor that you get from Act 2 from one of the three main missions that shows up at one point after you've done the intro of Act 2. 
It's called Ghost from the Past. So I already went more in depth on this armor set in my best armor video because it's really one of the best armor sets in the game if you just like the overall samurai gameplay and really prefer doing the standoffs. I'm not really a big fan of them. I do like the look, but I don't like to play that way. I like to have the more regular combat. So that's why I prefer the Gosaku armor for that melee combat focus instead. Like staggering enemies with the right stance, that's what I like to do. And the Gosaku armor helps with that. And it's also my favorite armor in terms of look, especially after the third upgrade. So then you also have the cool helmet and mask. Really the first thing I did when entering the new area of Act 2 was complete this unbreakable Gosaku mythic mission that you find over here on the map. So it's pretty early to the entrance. It will take some time to liberate the six farms that are needed to get keys to in the end unlock this armor set. But as I said in that best armor video as well, it will be worth it. And in that best armor video, I also went way more in depth on this armor. So again, we'll link to it at the end of this one. In Act 2, there's also another mythic quest called the Six Blades of Kojiro that you find over here on the map. And for this one, you have to complete six duels. And then in the end, you get the Kensei armor. And that is also the armor they actually showed two years ago in the first gameplay at E3 2018. It does not only look cool and unique, the perks on this armor are also pretty unique. Like it focuses on getting resolve back so you can heal yourself more often or do the special abilities more often. And you can earn them also by doing mythic tales and I will totally do a video on that in the future or it might already be up by the time you watch this. Either way, the Kensei armor is also all about ghost weapons, increasing the damage. And also cool is that when striking enemies with a ghost weapon, they will deal 25% less damage and they will receive 25% more damage or actually 50% if you fully upgrade this armor. So if you really like using ghost items like me, then this will be a cool armor to get for sure. And I love the upgraded look as well. Super BV, I'm down for it. The ghost armor cannot be missed. You get it as part of the From the Darkness main mission near the end of Act 2. And I also already went more in depth on this in terms of stats. But in this video I want to share two colors that you maybe haven't seen before. Because there's namely a way to get an awesome red version of the ghost armor or a white version. And you can only get one of them. It would be a spoiler if I told you how, but totally let me know in the comments down below if you want me to do a dedicated video on it with a spoiler warning, of course, in the comments down below. Overall, this armor is, of course, awesome for stealth, but there is another armor that might be even better for that, I would say. And totally check that best armor video as well for a more in-depth analysis of this Mongol armor, but I really think that that is the best armor in the game for many situations. This Mongol commander outfit namely has a major health boost and damage decrease, and the fact that it also massively reduces Mongol detection speed is insane. So they will just not notice you if you are being sneaky or simply walk up to them. You can get this armor in Act 3 from the Fit for Khan side mission over here on the map in the Jokaku temple that you will reach no matter what if you just follow the main story. And good luck because it will have you complete some pretty challenging camps in the snowy area of Act 3. And then we got a more funny outfit, the Fundoshi, that just like the Mongol outfit does not have any upgrades, so you do not have to spend any resources on it. And in this case, it also just has one perk. Running and sprinting no longer creates noise, so you can just run and the detection will not increase as long as the enemies don't see you. So not really that strong, overall you will just be using it to run around in your underwear in this otherwise really serious game. Taking hits, killing mongols, it's really weird, you will be covered in mods and other stuff all the time. Must be cold as well. Now, but a funny little unlock that you get after finding and completing all the hot springs in the game. And I will link to a video in the video description with all the hot springs so you can easily find them to unlock the suit. Totally subscribe for way more Ghost of Tsushima content if you haven't already. I got a ton of stuff on the channel and a lot more coming your way. A like on this video would really help the channel out. And totally check out that best armor video that I've mentioned a lot here. 
if you haven't already. It goes way more in depth on four best armor sets in the game. Let me know your favorite armor sets in the comments down below and there are more Ghost of Tsushima videos in the pinned comments so you can easily navigate to the one you want to watch. For now though, I will speak to you next time and goodbye.